Would you mind walking us through some of your collaborations that you've done over the years? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, I mean, this is probably the one that most people know us for, right? This is the one that sort of, um, I say, put sneaker culture on the map for the commoner. You know, there was a sneaker culture before this, but I think after this dropped and, you know, what transpired off of this, everyone knew what sneaker culture was at this point, you know? So this is, to me, one of the, just the, uh, the most, you know, well-known creations that I've ever done. Um, I'm amazed at the sort of history that it's been able to stand the test of time and it keeps going. Like, it's been 10 years now and people still talk about it, want to do stories on it. And, you know, it just got inducted into the Brooklyn Museum uh, this month for the sneaker exhibition. Um, and yeah, I mean, even if you had 7K, you couldn't get a pair of these, you know? Like, it's just, it's really hard to find and the people who have it don't want to let go of it, you know? Um, so that's pretty dope. And then being part of the What the Dunk, which was like Nike SB's best dunks ever on one shoe. Uh, and then putting the pigeon on it is pretty awesome too. And then, you know, one thing that I think is really um, unique about the pigeon is the different silhouettes that we were able to apply that iconography to. Um, if you think about all the other collaborators and different designers that people work with, not a lot of them were able to do uh, collaborations with different companies. And if they were, they did different things on different shoes. I think secretly what I wanted to do was almost like a graffiti mentality, which was to get like my tag up on all city. You know, so to be able to do like the, the pigeon suede and then do like the New Balance and then do the Wallaby, you know, and then do the Converse and then do the Timberland boot over there. Like, I think being able to apply the same iconography to all of that and then spread it out is you know, pretty amazing. I think some of the things that like most people don't know that we did pre pigeon dunk was like some of this stuff, like the Nordic pack we did, the navigation pack, you know, we did all of these. Um, yeah, I was looking at the case when we came in. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah, we did out. all of this stuff. Um, this is part of the navigation pack, the Shocks NZ. Uh, was that Nordic pack dunk on uh, no, Air, Force, Air Force One High party resort as well? Yeah, yep. Good and shoe. then we also did, this was the actual, this shoe, and there's a rift. That <laughs> I goes got that along. in my closet. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so we designed both of these, and these were the first two shoes that made extensive use of lasering. You know, if you remember, they did like, um, like Mark Smith did, a, did an Air Force One mm -hmm. and a Dunk. You know, they did those. But those were at 255 only at the time, at Nike 255, so mm -hmm. they weren't widely available. This and the Navigation Pack were the first widely available lasered shoes. And they asked us to do all the artwork and all the design on it. So that was pretty dope. What else we got here? Oh, the, I'm really proud of actually being able to work with Clarks. So obviously being able to do the Wallaby is a classic. This is the first time they ever did a two-tone crepe sole. Um, and this is extremely rare. We did two other shoes with uh, Clark's on this. They asked us to reinterpret what the Wallaby would be in the future. So that then we came out with this shoe. This is like our take on like the future of the Wallaby. Super lightweight, all aerated. Um, and this is obviously a shoe that I knew when we designed. It was very, very forward, very fast, and like not everyone can pull this off. Um, so then we did a mid version of it, which is this, that is taking inspiration from that and the Wallaby and putting it together and making it much more wearable. You know what I mean? So this is like an everyday shoe that I could rock all the time. So pretty proud of that one. Uh, what else we got? This is probably something people don't know. Here's a little tidbit. Like we actually were doing a lot of design work for Timberland for a while. So not only did we do our own Timberland, but we actually did like the, the RZA Timberland, which is like the Wu-Tang Timberland. Um, Chinese New Year Timberland. And little known sneaker history lore, the first Supreme Timberland was our project that we linked Timberland and Supreme together to do that. This is the Dominican Day Parade Timberland. <laughs> East, the Easter Day Timberland. So yeah, we did a lot of these. Uh, do you, do you, being from Tokyo, I mean, like going to Tokyo, do you know what Selux is? No, not Selux. Selux was the, um, 
the Louis Vuitton members only store. So it was a store called C Lux uh, that was at the top floor of the LVMH store on Ometasando. It was members only. You had to uh, earn a certain amount of income to be part of this, and you had to spend a certain amount on LV product every year to maintain your membership. But they did the illest shit for their members. And one of the things, we were a consultant for them, and one of the things they asked us to do was to see if we could do a Nike with Silux. So we did this all white patent leather Air Force One with the Silux logo embroidered on the back. And this was for the members only, so this is like ridiculously rare. How is that shoe not piss yellow by now? I know, right? It's pretty good. It held up. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's good. I didn't oh, this, is, this is the riff. Either. This is the riff. What'd you say? I didn't know you guys did backpacks also. I was looking through the case while we were waiting yeah, for you. Yeah, that's just the one-off that we did. What's, what's that dunk low SB at the top? It's not even a This dunk. one? Yeah, what is that? Oh. Never seen that. Yeah, this is super rare. So, we worked, do you, do you know what the NRF is? No. Okay, so I formed this league where, okay, so the backstory is me and some boys, and Domaini was part of this too, we always want to play basketball. And as you know, getting an indoor court in New York City is like one of the hardest things in the world. So I was close with Nike and I was like, listen, me and like a bunch of people that are all somewhat influential in their own field of like whether they're designers or journalists or writers or photographers, or videographers, all these different people, we all want to play ball and we don't have a place to play ball. And here you are, Nike, trying to push basketball shoes on people and complaining that people don't actually play sports in your shoes anymore. Here's like a hundred people that want to play sports in your shoes. Can we make something happen here? And they're like, yeah, let's, let's do something. So I created this league called the Nike Recess Federation because it would be an after work program where these people would come together. Only a hundred people were allowed in the club and it was kind of like this fight club thing that, that I wanted to create where like we would meet secretly at like a secret gym and we had 10 teams, 10 people each on each team. Each team was named after a historic shoe. So it was like Team Foam Posit, Team Hirachi, you know, Team Air Force One. Um, and so it got to be really, really dope actually. We actually got to the point where shit was so real that like I proposed, yo, you know, we had a playoff, we had a regular season, a playoffs and a finals. And I was like, I think we should play the finals on Madison Square Garden, you know? And they're like, all right, we can make that happen. Get the hell out of here. You did not make that happen. Yeah. So we played the finals on MSG and- Please tell me somebody recorded that. Oh yeah, I'm sure they oh. recorded to that. Yeah. So um, the trophy, the trophy for winning the NRF was this shoe, which was all basketball material leather, NRF embroidered on the side for you and your team, the winning team in your size. So this is like a one of 10. So we're going to assume right now that you won, right? We won one season. Yeah. I was Team Terminator. Team Terminator. And we won it on MSG floor. It was ill. <laughs> it was so ill, man. That was, seriously, that was one of the illest moments of my life because I was in, I was in Tokyo for the playoffs for work. Mm -hmm. So my team had to get to the playoffs, you know, on their own. I hopped on a flight back to New York, landed on the same day, literally went from JFK straight to Madison Square Garden. Like, it was how did you surreal... win on your jet lag, dog? Dude, it was such a surreal moment because it was like just one of those like off JFK, run through the terminal, hop on a cab, get to MSG, go through the player's t tunnel, like take my clothes <laughs> off and like got the shorts and the jersey on, run onto the court, like, and then win it. I know you felt like a superhero yeah. that day. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't one of the, I was the coach of the team, right. but it was just ill, it was an ill feeling. So we got to win this and, and that went on for like five years. Um, and then like in true Nike spirit, they decided, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna take this in-house and do this ourselves. Thanks a lot, Jeff, right? So then, which is normal, whatever, Nike always does that. Mm -hmm. So then they take it in-house, do it themselves, and then in like a year, people didn't like it and it was over. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was pretty classic, man. That's the NRF. So we did, um, we did three classic New Balances as well. Again, as I was saying before, um, it's very, it's very rare to find sort of a design entity that's able to incorporate their iconography over all different styles. So the first one we came out with was the New Balance Pigeon. Um, we flipped the bird to be like a flying pigeon just to Great differentiate shoe. it. Yeah, just really, really a classic shoe. Um, and then we came back with this the following year with what I call the Albino Pigeon. So this was the follow-up to that, which 
you know, you see a lot of pigeons that are all white, or mostly white, so we wanted to do an all white version as well. So this is also extremely beautiful. This, to me personally, I like actually better than the gray for wearability. And then we came back in year three with um, what I dubbed the black pigeon. And this came about inspired by London. So the idea behind this is that London is such a rainy city, all the pigeons look like black, nasty birds. So we did this black waterproof shoulder fabric. Uh, it's waterproof. Pigeon. Yeah, this part is waterproof. Yeah, it's shoulder, uh, which is like a sort of like a Gore-Tex material. Okay. Uh, and this was made in England. So, you know, harking back to the London story, these were made in England. Um, and this is the black pigeon. This is all white 3M reflective. And then the inside of this is a little bit more um, new bucky, like sort of heathered for warmth. So it's like it adds a little bit more warmth than that one, which is mesh on the inside. So yeah, so this is the nice little triumvirate of the, of the pigeon family for New Balance. So question, being a sneakerhead, right? Yeah. How many doubles do you got of this in your closet right now? Not really. On ice, really? Yeah, I'm not a you know, one to rock and you know, one to stock. I wear all my kicks. So like for instance with the pigeons, this is the one that I own, that I wear, that I have played basketball in. And the other side of this is now sitting at the Brooklyn Museum. Like that's the only pair I have. So I don't really have like inventory of shoes. I mean, I have a lot of shoes, but I don't have triples and quadruples of shit. Copy. Yeah. I've never really resold shoes even. Like I've very rarely, if a friend comes and wants to buy one, I'll do that, but I don't like have an eBay account selling shoes or anything. Sixth grade is when Jordan 3 came out. Um, and even, I mean, I was buying the Jordan 1s and even before that I was buying the Bo Jacksons and the tra McEnroe trainers, the Revolutions. I mean, I had one guy offer me like a like hundred, you know what I mean, for like everything, like everything I own. And I was just like, wow, that's nice. <laughs> but, uh, and it's a nice number, but I just, I don't know. I mean, I just can't 